Hello and welcome to Sim UK. I've recently completed High Fleet on the hardest difficulty setting using nothing but my own ships. Well, I started with my own ships. Off the back of that, I have learned so much. So I decided to put together this High Fleet Bible, the ultimate High Fleet guide for beginners and pros. Here in this video, I will attempt to share the lessons that I've learned during my recent hardcore campaign. And the link to that is in the description below if you would like to watch it. I use footage from that campaign in this tutorial, but as it's over 10 hours long, it is very difficult to find and locate the precise video clip I need to emphasize a particular point. So please be understanding about that. They won't match up very well. This is not, I repeat, not, hey, look how good I am. This is far more about me sharing with you the lessons from the mistakes that I made so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And I really hope it helps you in your gameplay. Most of what you see here today, I have learnt the hard way, but there are numerous tips in and amongst everything that were suggested by my viewers, and to them I offer my eternal thanks. So I have created chapters so that it's easier for you to skip the parts that you don't want to learn or pay attention to, and just focus on the bits that you do. I do ask that you consider leaving us a like and even a comment if you find anything useful here. It really does help us with YouTube. And if you have any suggestions, ideas, or corrections for me, then please put that in the comments. I'd love to read that too. All right, thanks for watching. Enjoy the tutorial, guys. Initial setup and game settings. The first thing you'll want to do is to decide what settings you want in game. The flickering screen animations can dramatically reduce visibility during combat. Turn it off if you want a less difficult challenge, but keep them on for that ultimate challenge experience. There are updates now which include an optional aiming reticule, by default there isn't one, so if you want some practice this is a good way to start. Numerous other settings exist that allow you to tweak and adjust the game to suit your particular needs. Personally, I just play on default. It's worth noting that the game doesn't really save your progress like most other games do. When you reach a Fleet HQ, a game save point will be created, and you can revert back to that at any time. However, there have been numerous occasions where game save files have been broken, so if you can back up your game save files additionally, externally, using another app, then I recommend you at least consider doing that. Fleet Selection The prologue will teach you the core mechanics of the game. It's well worth playing at least once. Once you have completed it, or if you bypass it, the next thing you will need to do is to select your fleet. Now, fleet selection will ultimately depend on you and your personal preferences. The only wrong way to play this is to think that your way is the only right way to play, and I hear from players like that all of the time. There is no right way to play this game. You can be tactical, agile, or just get heavy and smash whatever you choose. It's entirely up to you. When selecting your fleet though, do consider the following things. You will need to be able to attack enemy cities and freight ships as you progress north in order to get resources and cash. These battles can reward you with salvage, but not always. Prize ships usually earn you between 10 to 20,000 at a time, but if you wipe out the enemy using aircraft or missiles, there will be no salvage at all. And if you send aircraft in to weaken a prize ship's support team, they might just turn and run, and believe me, they're very good at running. If you haven't got radar, you probably won't find them. When considering your attack ships, you must be comfortable with being able to destroy about two to three enemies with relative ease. This can be achieved far easier if you use bombs and surprise attacks, or perhaps ships with missiles. That can also be very useful. Also, when talking about weapon choice, the 36 mils are really good for shooting down enemy missiles, and 100 mil cannons or above are very good for punching through armour. If you get hold of some high explosive ammo, that can also be incredibly effective. I highly recommend you try grabbing some high explosive rounds early on, even at Ur if they have any. Now these attack ships also need to be able to travel at least a thousand kilometres at a time, or preferably more. So if they don't have that kind of range, you're going to have to think about buying a tanker to go with them. But try and factor in range when choosing your ships. Another good option here is to build your own ship to cater for your specific needs. I absolutely love my cheap, fast decoys that have over 8,000 kilometers range. They are so useful. 
but they have no weapons on them because that is not what they're intended for. For fighting ships, I have a spiky and a hunter. They will give you 99% silent strike opportunities and are by far the best fighting ships that I've used on this game. If you would like to get access to the spiky and the hunter, you'll have to join my Discord and get them there. I'm putting the Discord together at the moment, so it might take me a few days, but uh, I'll put a link in the description as soon as that's done. In addition to attack ships, you will also need to consider your defence against strike groups. Strike groups get progressively harder and more volatile as you progress further north. They have seemingly unlimited numbers of missiles and aircraft, and the heavily armoured strike groups are very difficult to take down indeed. Just like your flagship, they'll have missiles, radar, elint, and IRST. They'll possibly have jammers too. If you use any of these things, it will of course alert your position to the enemy. But alone, this is not enough. I highly recommend that you consider aircraft carriers for reconnaissance. They are good for both attacks and defence. Depending on numbers, weapons and position, they have varying successes, but ultimately aircraft are probably the most useful thing that you could possibly have in this game. Your flagship might also have a few anti-aircraft missiles. These are essential when under attack by missiles. You're going to need at least enough to take down six missiles. That's the most number of missiles that I have been attacked by. One is enough, but two is probably safer. And they're very useful against aircraft and bomber attacks as well. Other smaller ships, like the Yars or the Fennec, provide additional protection from missiles by using anti-aircraft missiles themselves. In the later game, you can expect considerably harder enemies too, so you will need equivalent fighting ships or superior numbers and decent tactics at your disposal. Once again, I urge you to take a look at my High Fleet hard campaign, and rather than watching it and copying what I do, watch it and learn from my mistakes. You can always consider building your own flagships and other ships too, I added aircraft to my flagship, which makes it cheaper than buying the Sevastopol and a longbow, and more effective, in my humble opinion. I have smaller unarmed ships, as mentioned, which are called decoys, and these are great for collecting supplies and fuel. They travel huge distances quickly, and they can really turn a game around. First steps in a new campaign. Even if you're going to speedily start a new campaign, aka not play the prologue, do consider not skipping that storyline. The pot that is handed to you at the very beginning guarantees that you get your first Tarkan allegiance. And at the end of the game, the number of Tarkans you have equals allies, and the number of stars that you have for each ally indicates the number of ships that they can provide to you. The map is dynamically generated with every campaign start, so do assess your surroundings before you move on. I personally recommend that you visit the surface of Ur and grab some of those essentials first. I'm talking high explosive rounds, missiles and bombs, and uh, rockets for the aircraft carrier if you're running any of them. Proximity rounds are absolutely superb when you're trying to fight against aircraft as well, so consider grabbing some of those if you can afford it. As far as priorities go, you should start by trying to find fuel and the first Tarkan. Then enemy radar and rare ammo for bombs, missiles, etc and stockpile them if you can. These can only be found at specialist cities, so do try and work a sensible route so you can get the bits and bobs that you need. If possible, aim to finish at a shipyard. I find this a great option. It allows me to regroup and repair after my first initial strikes. Or better still, if you can find a hidden city, that's the best place to go. I like to try and have two strike groups running at the same time and send them out accordingly from the main fleet, along with aircraft if possible. Keeping silent attacks going is by far the best way to start out. When you select a strike group, look in the bottom right hand corner to see what the chance of a successful silent attack is. If it's over 90%, you're in a good ballpark figure. Some of the bigger and or slower ships will really reduce your chances, so select that strike group carefully. I do urge you again to check out my spiky and hunter ships, which will guarantee you a 99% silent strike opportunity. Now something the community have said to me, and I believe it to be true, is that there is an extra likelihood of a surprise attack going through if you attack at night when it's dark. Obviously the fighting will also be in the dark, and that has its own connotations. If you complete that first stage successfully, then you should have ammo, weapons for aircraft, and enemy info. Hitting a few trade ships early on will help get things moving as well, but remember that they will almost certainly alert a strike group, unless you manage to get them in a surprise attack when they're docked at a city. If you do attack whilst they are on the move, 
Try to create distance between your main attacking units and your fleet if possible, and ensure that you have a safe city within reach of your ambush as well, just in case things go a little bit wrong. Staying too long at any city will make them hostile towards you, which basically means that they will tell the enemy whenever you're there. Moving on from cities that have become hostile is obviously the right thing to do, but sometimes you'll want the enemy to move towards that location so that you can take a sneaky shortcut and leave them there all on their own. It's especially useful if there's a hidden city at your disposal. I built a decoy ship. It's super fast, has super long range, and it's super cheap so I don't mind if it gets blown up. For a little more cash, I added an e-lint. This stops you getting caught out by strike groups, which can happen, of course, if you wait just a minute or two too long. I've also got one with a radar. Now, this gives you a chance to escape against aircraft and missile attacks. It's probably the best one out of the lot, but it's not the cheapest. You can use the IRST to do this as well, but it's less effective because it lacks the range and lacks accuracy. Occasionally, if you get lucky, you can stumble across some unarmed convoy ships and then you can just fly right up to them and you get them for free because if they have no military support, they don't fight, they just concede and you can take them for absolutely nothing. It's a complete gamble because of course your aircraft has no weapons on it, but it is super fast and super agile. So you can always just fly straight into the retreat point and normally you can get away with that. Fuel, money, repairs, morale, and your personality. The three essential things in game for me are fuel, money, and repair points. Repair points can be gathered from disassembling the hull in debris after battle. Additional repair points can be earned as well from landing ships on the surface, although I find this to be so unnecessary that most of the ships I build have no legs. Effectively, what happens when you do this is that it dramatically reduces the time and cost of repairs. So repair points are super, super valuable, possibly even more valuable than money. Special cities provide benefits, fuel depots for fuel, shipyards for repairs, etc, etc. Shipyards provide additional cost and time reductions for repairs as well. Fuel from a fuel depot is super cheap and I recommend that you fill up completely when you get the opportunity to do so. Sometimes though, when you're buying fuel, you might be forced to leave that location, thereby leaving some of the fuel that you've paid for behind. This is if the enemy has tracked you down and they're forcing you to move sooner than you wanted to. I created a ship specifically for this point. It's called a fuel mule. It's great for running back and grabbing that extra fuel. Now, later game, the furnaces have to stay on, and this drives fuel consumption through the bloody roof. There are times when parking a ship and letting it run out of fuel is okay, so consider that as an option. At this point, though, don't buy fuel too early, because you'll just be wasting it. Oddly though, the crew don't freeze if you run out of fuel completely, so in some ways, that's a benefit. They say that money makes the world go round, and the same applies in High Fleet. Now obviously, money spinning ideas include capturing cargo ships. They're the, probably the most profitable out of all the options, but it's not always that easy, and it does attract strike groups to your location. Scavenging debris after battle and selling unwanted weapons, ammo and other Bits and bobs that you might pick up along the way is another good way and probably the most profitable and most easiest way for you to get money without getting attacked by a strike group. Now you can also request funds from the Tarkan Prids. Now this will cost you a star each time you do it and if you run out of stars he will no longer be your ally. Other Tarkans provide other similar boosts like morale boosts, repair points, hidden city locations or random ships that can join you. But do try and keep as many of these stars as possible. Only use the Tarkans if absolutely necessary. All supplies are available when scavenging. Any ammunition that you get for weapons that you don't own, you can sell them on. But do be careful not to sell the ammo you've just bought and you want to keep. For example, I don't know, aircraft rockets. I have a bit of a history with this. But do make sure that the things you're selling are not things that you want. Morale is another big issue. If it gets too low, and there are many ways that that can happen, then the game will probably be over for you. Every ship that is involved in a battle will lose one morale point, even if they don't fight. If you retry a battle, you will restart with full ammo and armor, exactly as they were when you started the fight the first time, 
but it will cost you an additional morale point as well. If your morale gets too low, your crew will riot and some of your ships won't fight. Now there seems to be a bit of a bug here where if enough ships have rioted, then other ships with enough morale to fight won't fight either. So I'm hoping that's something that gets fixed sooner rather than later. Now the alternative to retrying a battle is to retreat. This will enable you to run or return to the fight if you so choose, but it will happen without repairs or without your ammo being rearmed. So if you've already deployed all of your missiles, you won't have any more. But you can then re-enter the fight. All the damage is retained for both you and the enemy. Now this gives you an opportunity to get back into the fight and maybe uh, it takes them 10 seconds to get their guns loaded and ready to start firing at you. And that might be enough for you to turn the balance of the fight in your own favor. Throughout the campaign, there will be certain incidents that happen and you get to choose your responses to these situations. Off the back of that, these can cause morale to be gained or morale to be lost. It also offers up the opportunity for you to gain and lose personality traits. I'll talk about those now. Personality traits are only really useful when negotiating with Tarkans. What I believe happens, and this is off the back of a comment that somebody left for me, if you have one or more personality trait that's in your arsenal, then you will get access to more cards associated with that trait. So the more variety of personality you have, the more options you will have during negotiations. Tarkan personalities are randomly generated at the start of the campaign, I believe, so you're unlikely to be able to convince all of them to join you, but the more variety you have in your personality, the more cards you can play to try and convince them to join you. Even if you want to be a happy, thoughtful, caring leader, you might be trying to negotiate with someone who is a cutthroat killer, and they're not going to be impressed with cuddly bears and hugs. So you really do need to think about the personality traits that you can gain or lose during these incidents. Maps, radars, tracking and information gathering, plus hidden cities. There are just two essential items that I need on my flagship, a radio and an e system. If you have a radio antenna on your ship, then you can intercept radio transmissions. I have a full tutorial on how to do that and how to crack the encryption algorithm without the code. The call sign that you see on a message is super important. It helps you to keep track of enemies like the strike groups, the missile carriers and the aircraft carrier movements, as well as convoy movements as well. I use the ruler tool and the pen in order to make a note of enemy positions and then I drag them around the map as my information gets updated as I intercept more and more radio transmissions. This is so powerful a tool. It really allows you to make better strategic decisions. Equally, I like to use my decoy ships in order to attack cities in the opposite direction that I'm actually going. Well, I say attack. Normally what I do is I send them to cities that I've already sacked and I let them sit there until they become hostile and call in a strike group. I do this in order to confuse the enemy and to lure them out of position. Now, you will of course need to keep moving your fleet as well. So silent attacks during this kind of manoeuvre are essential, otherwise your entire ploy could be blown. I don't know exactly how many aircraft carriers, strike groups or missile carriers there are in total, but I'm guessing there are more than 10. So you will want to pull this manoeuvre more than once, in fact a number of times. You can always park in the desert somewhere, hidden cities are even better because you cannot be located at all, and that way you can lure the enemy away from your desired location but it won't always work because you cannot guarantee which strike group or aircraft group will be called to attack you. But nine times out of 10, this is a very effective technique. Now I find the radar to be useful at times. For example, when I'm searching for a convoy that uh, I've used my aircraft to take out their support convoy and they're on the run. If you're trying to chase them down, it's very difficult to find them. They're excellent at running. But if you have radar on your attack ship, then you can find them very, very easily. I also find radar a very useful thing to get early warnings about missiles or aircraft attacks. And sometimes it can also entice the enemy to fire their missiles at you or send their troops in that general direction. So, yes, I could send a ship out into the middle of the desert, turn the radar on and let the enemy attack the living daylights out of it. For one thing, I'll know where they are. For another thing, they won't be shooting my actual fleet. I would much prefer that they attack a small cheap ship like a decoy instead of knowing the precise location of my flagship. 
Now the e-lint, as I've mentioned, is the most useful tool available in game, after the radio perhaps. But in the later game, the e-lint is the key. It's completely undetectable by the enemies, and it alerts you to their radar, giving an approximate location for them. Most fuel-carrying ships have them, and this makes them very useful indeed. You can literally deploy them anywhere, and then have an advanced warning system in place all over the map. Now the jammer does a pretty good job of disrupting missiles, trying to home in on your radar emissions. But they also alert the enemy to your approximate location, which might be something you want to avoid. Although to be fair, if they're already firing missiles at you, then they probably know where you are. By far the best way to gather information, other than radio, is to use aircraft. Now I've got a detailed tutorial on aircraft coming out later. My early one was a bit of a hit and miss guesswork tutorial. But now that I know them inside and out, I'm going to make a much better tutorial. You can scout cities using just one single aircraft. This allows you to plan your attack options far more succinctly. There is no point in sending five ships to an area that only needs one. You can attack ships in cities and weaken stronger outposts if that is necessary. And their speed and range is very, very effective against strike groups and missile carriers too. Be warned though, the enemy are smart and they may use the direction of travel of your aircraft in order to try and locate your position. So I always try and have my aircraft fly off at a different angle just to confuse the enemy as much as possible. I've even seen the enemy follow my aircraft completely with their own aircraft in order to locate the exact position of my own aircraft carrier. And then they follow up with bombs or missile strikes. Hidden cities are pretty hard to find alone, but they are worth finding. You can either ask a Tarkan at the cost of a star, and sometimes they take the star but don't actually know where there is one. Or you can ask a convoy when you're in a city with one there. I have a tutorial on how to find hidden cities using uh, low-down visual reconnaissance and the radar. Once discovered, they are identified on the map with a circle. These are great locations for repairing ships and allowing morale to recover. Just landing there gives you plus two morale. You also get a lot of weaponry as a gift there, and I think the fuel might also be cheaper. They're really handy for evading close-in, hard-fought strike groups, so if you can lure them down far south and then jump into a little hidden city, you've got yourself a nice little rope-a-dope situation going on. Be warned, enemy radar can and will detect you for a long distance. If enemy units detect you with their radar, they will send aircraft and missiles to try and kill you. If you can, try and destroy enemy strike groups' radar with your aircraft. That's if you want to push up on them nice and close, because they will not be able to detect you without their radar. Landing in the desert will make you invisible to their radar, but not completely invisible. So if they fly over the top of you, they will still attack you. If a city requests for backup, the enemy will also send aircraft or fire missiles in that general direction. Even if you're not there, I once managed to trick the enemy to fire on its own ships. Made life a little easier, actually. Aircraft planes are fairly basic beings. There are two main types of plane available. There is a third type, a bomber which does exist, but it's very hard to find. I don't think I've ever actually stumbled across it, but I know there is one. Now, aircraft are great for scouting enemy cities prior to attack. The T-7s can carry twice as many bombs as the smaller planes. The T-7s are also supersonic. This gives you a much greater chance of getting in undetected, get an accurate strike on your enemy, and get away without being shot down. They're much faster than the LA-21s, and therefore it makes it easy to run away from any aircraft that are trying to shoot down your aircraft on the way. So if the enemy send up a bunch of LA-21s and you're flying T-7s, they'll get one little shot at you and that's it. They'll turn around and you'll be long gone before they can fire a second volley. So just to clarify, aircraft ordnance is as such. The LA-21 has a 37mm cannon, 100kg and 250kg bombs, and 122mm rockets. The T7 has all of that plus 266mm rockets which I'm still undecided as to whether or not they're any good at all and they have K13 anti-aircraft missiles as well which are the air-to-air -air missiles that aircraft use those to shoot down other aircraft. Enemy aircraft will send multiple aircraft in order to try and shoot down your bomber groups in the air so if you can send some T7s with air-to-air -air missiles these are very effective 
but they only have two per aircraft. All planes have cannons by default and will attack enemy aircraft and ships with these, but they do limited damage and they are likely to get shot down. They are not effective at all. The most effective things are the bombs. Bombs are great for big, heavily armoured slow ships. If you can get them when they're parked on the ground, that is the best time to do it. You'll usually get a solid hit trying to attack them, and hopefully, if you're lucky, you'll expose the fuel tanks. Now, you can also get lucky strikes, which will wipe out an enemy super fast. It can happen to you as well. I had one incident in my Let's Play series where one aircraft got through my defences, dropped one bomb, and wiped out my flagship. Loading your aircraft with rockets will make them more effective against the faster, more agile, smaller ships, although many rockets will miss no matter what you do. Sadly, you cannot dictate priority targets with aircraft. And whilst the anti-aircraft missiles are absolutely deadly, I tend to send in a single aircraft first in order to try and trigger those anti-aircraft missiles, then avoid them by hitting retreat, then follow up with the same plane or even a second bomber perhaps a group of two or three aircraft at a time, and I find this to be the most effective way of using aircraft in this way. There are numerous benefits to this approach, mostly because it's effective. Far more effective, I think, than a large number of ships attacking at the same time. Now, somebody has told me that they can consistently wipe out entire cities with just six aircraft and not raise the alarm. Now, I've tried this and it hasn't worked. I assume they are playing on easier mode because I have never seen that happen on hard. Aircraft carriers in direct combat are pretty weak, although they have taken down a strike group with them once. Pressing X will launch your aircraft into the air. Now, there have been so many bugs with the aircraft in this game. Sometimes when you hit launch, they just won't launch. Retrying the combat battle that sometimes fixes that, sometimes it doesn't. There are numerous issues with aircraft, not all of which have been fixed at the point of making this video. They can cause crashes, they can explode your ships, they can be a real pain in the ass. But if you're in combat and you launch them and you have rockets for your aircraft within your arsenal, then in combat they will use those rockets in order to attack the enemy. Now I recommend you try and space the aircraft out as much as you can. I like to double tap, leave a gap, double tap, leave a gap. Because when they unleash those rockets, they will kill everything that they touch, including you and themselves, so be careful. But what you don't want them to do is for six aircraft to fire 36 missiles at one tiny little ship, destroy it, and then have no missiles left for anything else. Now, if you don't have any rockets at all in your arsenal, then they will default to the cannons, which are not powerful at all, but every little helps. Missiles. In High Fleet, missiles are really quite important, and there's a number of different missiles available in High Fleet, each with their own distinct characteristics. Now again, I've made a short, brief tutorial on missiles, which I'm going to update now that I've really played the game all the way through to the end on the hardest settings, and I've got a much better idea of how things work. In short, you've got an A100, which is a really short-range missile, but very powerful. It's good against ground targets, and it's good against nuclear missiles, if it's a nuclear missile itself. More on that later. You've also got our rockets. These are super fast subsonic rockets. They are very fast, very, very fast, and very powerful, but they only attack ground targets. We also have KH-15 rockets. These have a much, much longer range. They are relatively fast, about the same speed as an aircraft, and they have limited guidance. They're very good for ground targets, not so good for air targets, but they can be used for both. The KH-15Ps, again, long range, fairly fast, built-in radar guidance, allow them to hit air targets very effectively, unless, of course, there's a jammer screwing up their radar. Now, all these missiles that I've mentioned have a nuclear equivalent, and using them will start a nuclear war. If you attack a city with a nuke, you will get a war crime alert against you, and I believe this damages morale. If you fire any missile beyond their range, indicated by the red ring when you're trying to uh, set them up and direct them on your map, then they will simply run out of fuel and disappear off the map. Now, whilst missiles are relatively cheap, they do need to be reloaded in the repair bay, and that takes time. They're also susceptible to explosion and damage your ship significantly if they're hit by an aircraft bomb attack or if they're hit in combat. In order to activate missiles, or to activate the radar on the missiles in order for you to search the enemies, you will need to ensure that you place the arrow marker before they reach the target. 
If the radar turns on as they reach the target, there's a very good chance that they won't actually pick them up on radar and they will just miss. In order to attack cities, directly place the marker on the city itself. Or if you've already been there and you know that there's a target, there'll be a little red square and you can target them with that. Now, sometimes you get more than one little red square and you can identify a nuclear ship or an aircraft carrier or a missile carrier by a little indicated letter above the square. That way you can sort of uh, select which target you're aiming for, although it's still a bit hit and miss, to be fair. Now, if the enemy are using jammers, most of the missiles you fire at them will not hit their intended target. In some cases, they'll travel on and destroy another ship in another city. But most often, more often than not, they'll just run out of fuel and disappear. It's good to use aircraft in order to identify enemy positions. When they're on the move, especially, this allows you to gain far greater accuracy and not waste so many missiles. Combat. If you've used the earlier tips in this uh, tutorial, you will know the enemy that you're about to be facing. So you can decide which and how many ships to send. Don't waste more ships than you need to because you're wasting morale each time you do that. Ships that can evoke a silent attack when armed with bombs can be very effective. Most of the battles I had on hard mode started with me bombing the enemy first. This weakens or even sometimes destroys them outright and gives you a strong advantage or removes the advantage that they had against you. Now in every fight you will have two screens, one in the lower left corner, one in the lower right corner. On the left hand side indicates your ship and the status that it's in, red is bad and if it's missing that's even worse. And on the right hand side we have the enemy ship that you are currently targeting. In order to target an enemy just aim at it for about two seconds and it will pop up in that screen. Now every single ship including your own will have a weak spot a gap in the armour, or an exposed fuel tank or ammo dump that you can probably hit without too much effort. Use this to your advantage and try and target these gaps. Now don't expose yourself in order to do this. If necessary, just shoot them anywhere from anywhere. Don't put yourself in a position where you're going to get hit because damaged ships cost a lot to repair. So stay out of the range, try and use uh, your positioning as best you can, and if you get the opportunity to hit them where it hurts, go for it. Now, if you've already sent in a couple of aircraft in order to weaken the enemy, try and target the damaged ships first. And this won't always be possible because there are no more than three ships on the screen at a time, usually. And once you destroy one, another one will come in and that might be the one that's badly damaged. Now, the AI are pretty smart and they will work together in order to protect their weaker ships. They will even fly very low to the ground because they know they have a weak underbelly and they don't want you getting underneath them and attacking them from there. You can, of course, trick them to fly higher up and then shoot down underneath them. That's pretty much how I do it. Now, most ships have a weakness directly above or below the ships, but some are at the sides or even at the extreme angles. Whenever possible, use logical ammo options in order to give you a better advantage of killing the enemy. Armor-piercing rounds and an AK-100, for example, or any higher weapon for that matter, can destroy any armoured ship in just one shot. Well, okay three shots. You have to get a lucky explosion for that to happen, but it does happen. I even took out a nuclear flagship with just a fat man, and I didn't even have explosive rounds. What happened on that particular occasion was that I found a spot underneath the ship where he couldn't hit me with his rockets or with guns, and then I just chipped away until a little gap appeared and I killed the whole bloody thing. Quite a moment, and I wish I had saved that footage. Now, not getting hit, as I've mentioned, is way cheaper than trying to repair ships. If you've got good armour, then most of your ship repairs will be quite quick and cheap anyway. But if that armour gets broken and your ships get hit and you start losing guns and engines, things get very expensive. Now, there are many different ways of playing this game. A lot of people shout and scream about how good the super agile fighters are, and they're really good against small ships. And as I've mentioned, I used a fat man to take down an entire uh, missile carrier. So they can be very effective, yes. But sometimes the well-armoured ships are better against all enemies, including those bigger ships, because they can just take a punch. Although, somewhere in the middle, I think, is where I like to be. I've created two ships, the Hunter and the Spiky, and they're brilliant for this. They're really agile, but they've got one hell of a punch. Definitely check them out if you haven't already. Now, effectively, whatever ship you decide, whatever style you decide, is completely bespoke to you. And don't let any self-opinionated asshole you any different. We all fight and play our own way 
And whatever way that is, is absolutely fine. I don't care how you play, I've got my own style. Thank you very much. And you do too. So, when you're using boost, use it sparingly. I'm a bit heavy-handed with my boost, I admit it. Some people give me a lot of grief for that, but that's the way I play, and I'm quite happy with it. But, try and keep your boost held down for less than a second at a time. You just want to use it in order to change trifugal force effectively. Small boosts will get you moving quickly or change direction faster than not using it at all. And if you use it too much, there's a little green bar above your ship. This indicates the temperature of your engines and you can use fire extinguishers in order to cool down those engines after a long boost if you've done it a little bit too much. So just bear that in mind. Small machine guns on ships are excellent as secondary weapons. They are really good for defence especially when you're being attacked by lots of different ships and they've got lots and lots of missiles. When you have more than one on your ship, they become an effective attack weapon too. When you combine that with high explosive rounds, they can be formidable. So don't underestimate the small machine guns. Techniques are obviously varied. There are many different styles and I can only really share with you mine. Now this is not my, me telling you how to play, this is me telling you how I play. You are going to have to find your own style, and whatever it is, is absolutely fine. I maintain that numbers are the superior force, so I always try and reduce the number of ships that are shooting at me, and I feel that that gives me a distinct advantage. I do this by trying to identify weak or damaged ships, and then try and target them and wipe them out first. I also really like to use enemy ships as a shield, basically I use the enemy ships to protect me from the rounds and the missiles that are being fired at me. I absolutely love it when I trick the enemy missiles into hitting their own teammates, and especially when it destroys them, especially when it's a big ship that gets destroyed. It's even possible to get a ship that's firing missiles at you to hit himself with his own missiles, but that's a hell of a lot more tricky. It can be done, it's a brilliant boost for your morale, but it's not easy, trust me. So what I'm saying here basically is that all ship weapons and their movement are bespoke. Play the game, learn their movements and evolve your own playing style. Sometimes they even use the red aiming line that activates to trick you into moving and put yourself into a more dangerous spot so that one of their colleagues can shoot at you. Be aware that the AI in this game are very, very smart and they quite often work very well together trying to make it impossible for you to move around without being hit by at least one of them. Now missiles are a great way of levelling the battlefield. To wipe out enemies, aim for the exposed or weak spots. They can be destroyed, no matter how big they are, with one direct hit from a missile in an exposed fuel tank. They can also be used in order to expose gaps in armour. Then you can target them with your high explosive rounds. Try not to let those missiles get hit themselves though, because they can cause big damage to your ship. Same thing applies with the bombs. If they get shot and explode, they're going to do a lot of damage to your engines. Equally, if you drop bombs and fly into them, you will blow yourself up. But you can, and it's not easy, I have done it a number of times, but trust me, it's not easy. You can actually throw bombs at enemies, and I tell you what, against big heavy armoured units, they are very, very, very effective indeed. So if you can get away with doing that, it's definitely a skill worth pra practicing. So every fight that you're in will cost a unit one morale point. If you retry a battle, you will restart with full ammo and armor, but again, you will lose an additional morale point. So your ships will be exactly as they were when you first started the battle, but it will cost you another morale point on top of the morale point that you already spent on the first attempt at beating them. Retreating will enable you to run or return to the fight again, but without repairs or being rearmed. Now, sometimes that can work in your favor because any damage that you've done to the enemy will still be there. But when you go into a battle, there could be five to 10 seconds before they rearm and they are able to shoot at you. Now, the higher the level of the ship that you're fighting, the quicker they will be uh, able to reload their guns and fire at you. So just be aware that this doesn't apply to every single ship. A level four or five ship is gonna be ready to shoot at you the second you start. So I'd finally like to wrap this uh, Bible up with providing you some long game and additional tips. Now this part of the review is where anything that I forgot to mention during the review is going to be added. So it's not all going to be recorded at one time, but anything I go, oh, I wish I'd added that to the review because that's a really valid point, 
you're probably going to find that here. So, what I don't want to do is drop any spoilers for the game. I don't want to give away anything that's relatively important or exciting or unexpected. Needless to say, though, that luring strike groups, missile carriers and aircraft carriers south and then eliminating them early gives you more freedom to move around the map and obviously having less enemies trying to kill you is a very good thing. The more cities that you sack along the way moving north, the more movement options, weapons and ammo will be made available to you. Always having somewhere safe-ish to run to if things go bad is also a very valuable asset. And the better the condition of your ships, the better chance you have of fighting the enemy and winning the fight. Aircraft carriers are so effective, so try and keep them alive and replenished. Don't waste those aircraft. Fuel management in the later game is the hardest challenge by far. Now, there is an option to not leave furnaces on in the game, and this, I presume, will affect morale, but I'm not sure how badly this is something I haven't tried yet. So, as mentioned at the beginning of the review, if there's anyone out there who knows the answer to this particular question, it would be great if you leave us a comment in the comment section below. Now, whilst the default ships are absolutely great, depending on your playstyle, you might want to consider building your own ships with their own skills and abilities. Now I'm going to share all of the ships that I used in my Let's Play series, but I'm going to do that on a Discord server which doesn't currently exist. And I'm going to create a few building guides to help you out there if you want to build your own ships as well. But other than that, unless there's other things that I've added to this in the uh, between now and rendering the video, is everything that I can share with you about High Fleet. Now I really hope that something in here is helpful for you. I really hope the guidance is good. Please try and use this in combination with the tutorials that I've provided. And if you get a chance, do take a look at my hard campaign Let's Play, because other than copying what I do, there are lots of situations in there where I could have done things better, but I didn't know at the time, and I learned from my mistakes. So watch it, learn from my mistakes, go and enjoy yourself. I'd love to hear, especially if anyone has managed to complete the game on hard using any of the techniques I have here, or even if you have completely different techniques, completely different ideas and suggestions, I'd love to read that too. So please let me know in the comments, any ideas, thoughts, suggestions, feedback, I really appreciate it. And if you can see your way through to giving me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful too. Thank you so much. Enjoy yourselves. Take care till next time. Goodbye.